with soap scum remover. And I can see that you were not to see that because it was a safe bet they put this well. The soap scum remover. And I can see I can see the safe bet they put this well. The soap scum remover. And I can see I can see the safe bet they put this well. The soap scum remover. I want to do so just saying and saying that when you go in. And it seems to be the safe bet that there was a soap scum remover. And I, and I, I, and you. And to me. The soap scum remover. I want to the sink and say, I'm going to 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 sink and say, and it doesn't look like uh, like a very promising venue from the outside, and and you may well maintain that uh, position once you enter. But um, it's a nice place to play. The people who work there are wonderful. Um, they're great to us. We always have a good time there, or generally have a good time there. And um, we've done a lot of a lot of good fun shows. The only reason to play there is is because we like it and we like the people. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's our third band of the evening. Why don't you put your hands together? Give a warm welcome. You, you end Mike up in my shop when you go down there. The Dolphins. Let's give it up. Thank you. Or if you read Band Magazine, where Mike Kennedy and the Beer for Dolphins. I'm in a loose mood tonight. I want to make up some stuff, so let's do something. Um, what's the name of the new Clive Barker movie? Lord of Illusions. This song is called Lord of Illusions. <laughs>
I had the pleasure, I suppose, of meeting Mike for the first time when I was auditioning for uh, Z, Dweezil and Ahmed Zappa's band that we were all in together. And uh, I had a good two weeks to rehearse some pretty difficult material, but uh, a couple days before the audition, I received a couple of really, really difficult things, specifically this 20 minute long medley and this really impossible song called Purple Guitar. And I'd spoken to Mike on the phone once, he sounded like a reasonably nice guy, and I got to the uh, first rehearsal slash audition, whatever you want to call it, and he walked in, and he seemed fairly serious, and he really didn't say much to me except for song titles. He was just barking them at me, like, like he, he would say, okay, purple guitar, but, you know, not, okay, are you ready for this? Uh, did you get a chance to work on this one? Uh, you know, nothing like that, because figuring that's like a nine minute instrumental with like some of the most difficult licks I've ever had to play in my whole fucking life. No, it was just purple guitar, ready? <laughs> that was the first time I ever met him. He's grown considerably nicer to me since then.
Brian Beller on bass. The other members of Beer for Dolphins are Brian Beller on bass, and this evening uh, we had Joe Travers on drums because our regular drummer Tos Panos is in Japan, but he returns on Sunday and at that point he will assume his usual post as Beer for Dolphin drummer. And he's still doing, as you referred to it last time, I believe, Led Zeppelin cover tunes? Led Zeppelin cover tunes at schools in Japan for about $7,000. <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> Look at that boy over there, he hasn't got a care I can't 
When people ask me, what's the hardest song you have to play for Keneally? It's like, <laughs> what's a good analogy for that? It's like, uh, what's, what's that like asking? It's like, it's like, what's the most dangerous part of the Middle East? <laughs> uh, you know, obviously for the recording, uh, breakfast was really hard. The middle section of Cause of Breakfast was really hard, but it, it came together pretty fast. Uh, for me, the hardest thing is soloing. I, I, I've never been, like, I've never wanted to be the crazy, you know, soloist bass player. Meanwhile, John Patitucci is one of my favorite bass players, so go figure that one out. There's this song called uh, Vulture Fun, which isn't on any record. It will be on Half Alive and MI, but that's really hard. Okay, he has to get to dinner, so this is a love theme from Vulture Fun. Uh, is it really a love theme? Yeah. Uh, let's start right from where you start. One, two, three. <laughs>
Thank you very much for coming. Good night! <laughs> Many, many, oh yeah. Nothing better than a Wendy's downtown, too. Something about them. Yeah. No drive-through here. Ain't no tacky drive-through. <laughs> What does he eat? Uh, he loves fried crab walk from Jerry's, uh, and uh, and he loves uh, orange marmalade on burnt toast with sardines. It's one of his favorite things. I, I, I he usually lets me have a bite. Soap scum remover. And bourbon square number three? Bourbon square number three would be... Uh, the first gig that we did at bourbon square when Toss was, was back in the, the drummer's seat. And... The whole show was is not releasable, but there are a number of songs from it which are quite releasable. And those are the ones that you, the home viewer, are about to experience. And uh, we think that as you watch, that your spirits will be lifted your life will gain new meaning. Uh, people that like live down the street from you will become increasingly jealous of the quality of your life because you own this tape. They will light torches, they will come and destroy your home, and ultimately it'll be worth it because you got this great fucking tape. So as you're uh, in the street, you don't even have a VCR anymore because your neighbors broke it. At least you can remember what it was like when you could sit at home, when you had a home, and watch this tape. Bourbon Square number three. <laughs> Unfortunately, my, my bass player has just gone to relieve himself, so this is going to be a little drum and, and guitar duet until our bassist gets back. <laughs> Brian Beller on bass. Toss Panos on drums. Who has a lot of friends here tonight. Tempo. One, two, three, four.
makes me smile, makes me happy all the while. Now roll over, see the dawn and drink up. Please wake up. Seem my ever absurd. That's no reason to I say it is you younger and now you then you see come on yeah then you'll see come on yeah then you'll see come on yeah then song of the set. And there you have it. Mm -hmm. If, if I didn't do it, they would. Oh, he's, he's vain. He's, he's so image conscious. I mean, look at him with his fucking hat and his goddamn fucking glasses and, and his, his T-shirts that always start, you know, have something cool on them, or you know, this is he's, he's totally fucking an image hack. It's, it's unbelievable, and you know, I, I I just try and like you know do my job and and play the music, but you know, he's out there fucking showboating. And sometimes it's difficult to stand that sort of shit. Thank you. Let's skip 1988 for now. Hey, we're in a good mood. That's just us. He sold a cabinet today for 275. 
He's got it all with him now. Round on the base player. Yeah. And with that, count it in, Cross. A dead herring, and luck will come to the knee. This is my failing, this is my destiny. I'm a spoon guy, me. Ooh, ooh. Mother, father, what's becoming of me? A Panero Tear, you follow a Panero Company. Take your Panero Tear, you stick it in a drink. For a spoon guy is me. Rock and roll, everybody.
drunk and spend all of our money There's so much to buy barrels of apples in my eye Pile it up all around so ugly town and get fucked up together What's going on here? Okay, it's all about this finger. See that? Everything that you need to accomplish can be done with this finger. These are all just like completely superfluous. All, all the other nine fingers, useless. This is the source of my sound. Everything else is window dressing. So what you need to do is work on this finger. Hone this digit until it does whatever you say. Like right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this play the solo uh, that's on the song uh, Land of Broken Dreams. On Boil That Dust Back, I'm going to play it right now with this finger. It may not sound the same, but that's, it's like you can do a lot with effects in the studio, but, but basically it's, it's all about this. All right. Thank you. 
Imagine you're in New Orleans. Yeah. You just got done hearing skunk. And you're walking down the street. And all of a sudden, you hear this rhythm coming from an alleyway. And you say, Jesus, that sounds like toss. And you walk down and it's toss. And you go, toss, what the fuck are you doing in New Orleans? You're supposed to be doing a show in Van Nuys this evening. And he's dressed up like a woman. And his fingers have something and he's wearing purple lipstick. And he goes, you know, Mike, we've been friends a long time. You can start playing anytime, Toss. <laughs> years ago I went to a party and this woman was a palm reader saw that I was wearing my, uh, my watch on my left wrist and told me that that was the wrong thing to do if you want creative impulses to enter you unhindered she said a lot of the, uh, the creative stuff that we receive over the course of our lives enters our body through our left wrist and if you've got a, a watch in the way you are thwarting the, the most uh, remarkable and artistic things that might be coming your way. So ever since then I have worn the watch on my right wrist. My life has been a fucking disaster ever since. Time to get a new watch? <laughs> Not true actually. Uh, for some reason ever since I, I, I switched the watch Things have been going fine. I, it might not be a cause and effect situation there, but I'm not going to mess with it. So I'm a, a watch on the right wrist kind of guy. Thanks to that lady whose name I don't remember. Website. HTTP colon slash slash www.moosenet.com slash Keneally dot HTML will get you to the Mike Keneally page, which is 
absurdly huge. There's far too much information about me and the things that I've done on there. And uh, it that was started by another of the remarkable, helpful people in my life, a guy named Scott Chatfield, who's a program director for a classic rock radio station in San Diego, and an old friend of mine. And uh, just called me up in November of 1994 and said, you want a website? And I said, what the hell is that? And he described what the World Wide Web was. And by the end of December 94, we had the, uh, the first few fragments of the Mike Keneally page up. And then in the, the, the year following that, the, the, the web just exploded. Everybody had a page. And um, we just kept adding and adding and adding to ours, and it's gotten to the point where it is truly stupidly big now. And uh, Brian has his own uh, corner of the page called The Life of Brian, where he waxes eloquent on any subject that tickles him. And it's a, it's a nice, happy thing that we've got going on. I'll get a lot of nice response to it. A four-star Magellan Award winner. And... Uh, no plans to, to, to cease activity on that front. I, I would still add as much stuff to it as we can, as much as there's time to add. Any chance of doing one more? I think there's a good chance. Oh, if, uh, good. The, if you guys scream a little louder, come on.
Okay, stick around, still two more bands to go. I now real world, and if 
And now, as a conclusion to this fine interview. Bye, folks. Okay, let's see you take two. Bye, folks. Okay, it's sad, it's really sad. Bye, folks. <laughs>